Hey, Pete here for Studio Live today. Now, are you using GarageBand 2.3 and the new iOS 11 files integration? And are you having a few troubles working out exactly how to use it? Well, this is the video for you. I'm gonna give you a crash course in how to use the new files set up here in GarageBand on iOS. Let's go. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is going to be a very quick overview of how to use the files set up. If you subscribe, I have another video coming out that's going to go into more detail and do a real deep dive if you want more tips and tricks and ways to use files. So when you open up your i phone or your iPad, you're going to go to the recent tab here in GarageBand. So from here, you can really just open any of your recent projects. If you want to do any other sort of file management, you're going to need to go to the browse tab. So if I tap on browse here, at the moment, it's defaulting to on my iPhone or it'll say on my iPad or whatever your iDevice is. If I now tap into that GarageBand folder, what this is, is all of the projects I have stored on this device. So if this device goes for a swim tomorrow or I lose all of the data on here, then and it's not backed up, then I'm going to lose these projects if I don't have them backed up or over on my iCloud Drive. So I'm gonna show you how we can now use iCloud Drive to make sure that that doesn't happen and we keep our projects safe. So firstly, let's pretend we're creating a new project. I'm gonna tap Create Document. We'll just open the audio recorder here. Uh, yes, I'm using AirPlay. I'll just hit Record just to create a little bit of sound on here and hit Stop. And then if I go out of this song, so back to my songs, it's gonna have created a brand new song here once it saves. So there it is, my song six. Now let's rename that just so that we know what it looks like and where it is as we're going through. I'm going to tap and hold down on my song six and then release. And then you can see up here, we've got a rename option. So I'm gonna tap rename and then delete this one. And I'm gonna call this video test. And there we are. So now we have video test. And if this was an amazing project, not just one second of recorded audio, we would only have it on here and, and we'd want to make sure that we preserve this. So how we do that is that we now, once again, we tap and hold on that video test icon. And up the top here, we've got a whole bunch of options. So we've got copy, duplicate, rename, move, etc. If we tap on move, it will bring up a dialog box and ask us, where do you want to move this? Now it's already got iCloud Drive selected there, but if it doesn't, you need to tap iCloud Drive and then your GarageBand for iOS folder. And you can see we now have a little copy icon up here in the top right, which I'm going to now tap. And that has now grabbed this video test file and it's sent it over to iCloud Drive. Let's go over there now and take a look. So if I tap on iCloud Drive, and go into the GarageBand for iOS folder here in iCloud. There you go, we can see that video test is now sitting there. Now you'll notice that it's got a little icon there which is a little dotted cloud icon. Now that means that it is uploading the latest version of this file to iCloud. So what we need to do is wait for that to upload and then what it will do, it'll go to a status that looks like electronic loop there where it's just a file overall. Now, unfortunately, there is no progress indicator for uploads. So trust me that it is uploading, but it's quite frustrating because if you've got a large project, it will just sit there with that dotted cloud for up to however long you, your upload speed is on your uh, particular internet service. So it, it may take a little while, especially if you've got lots of recorded audio. So we'll use the magic of video editing to come back once this has been uploaded. Okay, video test is taking too long. So for the sake of this video, let's pretend that electronic loop is the file that I'm playing with here. Uh, so you'll see there that it now doesn't have any icon there, which means that the latest version of this particular file is now both on my device as well as backed up on iCloud Drive. So if I tap it now to open, then it's going to open up the project. I can do my editing. And then when I go back to my songs, you'll notice that it also now is uploading. So it's now uploading its latest version the other icon that you'll see down here is this particular little uh, down arrow, which means that the file is on iCloud, but it's not actually on this device. So to get those onto this device, we just need to tap. And this does have a nice download progress bar, as you can see there. So this will tell us that it's downloading and how long it's got to go with that classic Apple little spinny icon there. And then as soon as it's done, which is done now, it'll load up that particular file and we'll be ready to go ahead and play. Once again, when we go back to my songs, 
it's going to then go and have our little cloud icon, meaning that it's now uploading the latest version. So if I leave this here now, what it will do is it'll finish those uploads and these three files will go back and look something like this. Now, you will see this one here. We've got another copy of Electronic Loop. This is what happens when you open a, a project file on two different devices. If it finds a conflict and it can't work out which is the latest, it will make a backup copy and it will give the name of the device. So it's pretty handy if you uh, take your, your iPad and do a project and then grab your iPhone and update the project, uh, but it doesn't know which one, it will create another copy. And then you can go in and manually delete whichever one doesn't have your latest edits. So that's it for now. As I said, we've got another video coming out which will go through more detail about how to use files here in GarageBand. But I just wanted to go through the basics of how to create a project, how to move a project from your phone to iCloud and what the meaning of these three icons are because it's important to know that so you know which files are on your device, which files are being uploaded and which files are on the cloud that you can download and then edit on your device. I hope you found this useful and I'll see you next time.